today I'm mostly going to be talking about the streams where I guide and also just the streams that I spend a lot of time at on my own, just fishing for fun. Most of these places are going to be roughly within two hours of St. Louis. So, you know, if you guys are in the area for, you know, a ball game or whatever, they're, they're all going to be pretty solid options if anybody's visiting the area. And I'll most, so mostly I'll be talking about the Merrimack River, the current river, and then Westover Farms, which is a private trout fishery. That's where I guide. And then I have some other really nice little creeks that we'll talk about in here that are fun ones to go and visit, you know, a little tougher to guide on, but as far as just being fun places to do DIY stuff, some of our little trout, little rainbow trout streams are a whole lot of fun. Hey, Augie, let me Scott, jump in. There. Yeah, Jerry, yeah. are you seeing my full screen, Jerry? Or is it uh, a small slide? You're muted, Jerry. Still muted. Jerry? Oh, I, you're, I see your you're big slide and then the next slide. Does that help? You're seeing, that's what you're seeing. Okay. okay. I'm full. muted. Yeah, I'm seeing your full screen, Scott. But is no, it one not, full slide? It just disappeared. <laughs> was it one full slide or was it? Um... No, it was just the title page. Okay, give me a second here. I'm going to um, bear with me here. Okay. How about now? Is that better? That's better. That's better. That's good. That's Sorry about that. Okay. All yours. All oh, you're good. Okay. Go ahead and jump to the next one. All right. So that's just kind of an introduction of myself and some of the places I guide. And we can go ahead and go to, uh, go ahead and go to the third slide. All righty. So types of trout water. So I'll talk about all these. I just wanted to make sure you guys were from familiar with like the different types of trout rivers that we have here in Missouri. Just so you, when I talk about different types of streams, it makes sense. So we have trout parks like a lot of states do where you pay to go there and you can, at most of them, you can keep up to four fish a day. Um, except for there's one called Westover Farms. You can't keep trout at Westover. But at most of these trout parks, you can uh, pay, keep up to four fish, and they stock the fish there pretty regularly. So it's normally, you know, fish that are pretty, they, they can be caught fairly readily. They do get a lot of pressure, but most of them are fresh stockies. So they're pretty willing. They're, they can be a lot of fun. I, I normally like to avoid the crowds myself, but uh, if you just want to get out and catch some fish, the trout parks are definitely a good option. And then we have um, white ribbon streams, and these are they're public waterways. Uh, on these places, you can keep up to four fish. They can, you can keep rainbow trout of any size, and then the browns, if if it's on a white ribbon stretch that has browns, you can keep browns if they're over 15 inches. And most of these are managed, the white ribbon streams, they're going to be managed like a put and take trout fishery more than like a wild stream. So most of these, they stock in you know, several, just a couple locations along the stream. Normally, most locals are somewhat aware of the, of the stocking schedule. And then a lot of these white ribbon areas, they, a lot of the fish get caught fairly quickly. And then there's the red ribbon water. And in the red ribbon stretches, you can keep two fish. They must be over 15 inches though. Uh, the red ribbon waters are supported by stocking. Normally there'll be rounds and rainbows. And, uh, Let's see. Yeah, browns and rainbows in, in most of them. So more rainbows than anything, but on the red ribbon waters, but they, they'll have both. And then on the blue ribbon water, those are more managed as a trophy fishery. So 
and blue ribbon water summer is not stocked at all and it's just natural reproduction of rainbows others are uh, stocked by both browns and rainbows but regardless they're managed more to grow larger holdover fish so you may only keep one that's 18 inches or greater and the the places i like to frequent myself are normally the red ribbon and blue ribbon you just tend to see more fish and more quality fish on those kind of streams all righty we can go ahead and jump to the next slide okay so gear that you'll need it's most of our streams, you really are not going to be required to have a lot of specialty gear. If you come down here with a nine foot five weight and a floating line, or what it, really any normal trout setup, whatever you normally use to catch stream trout is probably going to be perfect. The best all around is probably nine foot five weight. If all you want to do is just catching trout, if that's your, your main goal is just the trout fishing. On some of the smaller creeks, some of the, some of the little blue ribbons, they're really small spring creeks. Having a smaller weight rod could be fun because you catch a lot of, a lot of small fish that are, you know, several inches long, you know, five, six inches long a lot of the time. Those fish are a lot more fun on a, on a three weight, but definitely not necessary to have a super light rod for those uh, blue ribbon creeks. On the larger rivers, the, the Merrimack and Current River specifically, um, I really like using six, and, six to eight weight rods with sink tip lines whenever the water's high. A lot of times when the water's up in the, down in this part of the world, the, the fish really get pretty keyed on bait fish, sculpins, crayfish, and having a, a little bit heavier weight rod for throwing larger flies can be helpful, as well as the sink tip. You know, the, the sink tip's important. You could throw smaller streamers with a five weight, especially if you had a, a sink tip or even one of those loop on uh, poly leaders. The sinking poly leaders could be, if you just wanted to make a five weight work with a floating line, you could add on a poly leader and that would help out with the streamer type thing. That's also a good way to catch smallmouth as well. We have a lot of tremendous smallmouth fisheries. And you know, it, that could be a fun combination to, you know, hit some of the trout streams and also do a little bit of bass fishing as well. I'll normally, with, with most of my kind of basic trout setups, I'll have them rigged up with a nine foot 4X tapered leader. Pretty good all around for the dry fly fishing and nymph fishing. I'll rarely fish 5X tippet or smaller. Um, Normally, I think if you have a good drift, most of the fish down here don't seem to be terribly spooked or terribly uh, leader shy. So normally, I, I feel that we're being pretty effective with 4X. And then another reason that I do it, maybe the biggest reason myself, is that our streams, we don't have a, a crazy high population of trout. And they, I would say they get a, a pretty crazy amount of pressure during times of the year. And I just feel like using 5X or smaller is going to push me into playing the fish longer than, than what would be safe for the fish. So I really like to make a big point out of getting fish in quick, keeping them in the water and, you know, have barbless hooks and, you know, getting them released quickly uh, so they survive because they do, they get caught a lot around here. So, so I, a lot of times that 4X thing is as much a, a conservation effort in my opinion, as it is a, uh, as it is for tricking the fish, but it's normally seems to be small enough. And for streamers, if you're doing any of that, normally I'll be using like a four to five foot leader on a sink tip. Uh, it'll normally be a pretty stiff, heavy leader. You could use a, a like a leftover butt section from an old tapered leader would work. And, and I'll normally tip that with like 18 inches of zero X tip it. You can go a little bit smaller. Uh, with the tippet on a streamer, especially if you're using little streamers. But uh, I find that it's if you get a decent fish and you're using a proper strip set with that streamer, it, some of the smaller tippet sizes, you can break fish off pretty easily uh, on, the, on the hook set anyways. So, and then again, if we're using zero X tippet, even a large fish, we can get it in really quick without exhausting the fish. Uh, it helps us with a safe release of that fish. 
All righty, we can go ahead and jump to the next slide. All righty, so this will be the first fishery that I talk about. And I, I kind of mentioned it at the beginning, but um, we have a lot more trout fisheries than what I've included in here. Most of these are just the fisheries within two hours of St. Louis, uh, just because they're the ones that I feel that I have enough experience on to really to speak about confidently. Um, there's a lot of others that I fish. I just don't do it as much. And uh, I have some resources I'll show you guys at the end um, that can kind of show you where there's some other fisheries if you're in another part of the state. You know, and some people from around other areas that could help you out with uh, with those fisheries that I that I maybe don't you know frequent anyhow. But we'll go ahead and we'll talk about Westover. So Westover is a private trout fishery. They own several hundred acres on a little spring creek that flows into a tributary of the Merrimack River. And this place is really fun. It, it, it's a little bit pricey to uh, go and fish for a day. I think it's 55 bucks for a full day, I believe, of fishing there. Or they have a yearly membership, which if you go to Westover a lot, their yearly membership is a pretty good deal. But, um, but it's, a, it's a really nice place. It's managed super well. Um, about half of the Spring Creek that flows through the property is left in its natural state. So, it, and the uh, so about half of it is just managed as a natural Spring Creek, um, kind of meanders through a forest like a lot of our native streams do. Um, there will be fish in there, and then about another half of it has been um, modified. So they've dug the stream out and, and made it meander around kind of like a chalk stream. So it's really fun to fish because of the way it meanders like a chalk stream or like some of the, some of the meandering kind of streams that you see out in the Western part of the country. So, and there's a, there's a great population of fish. They stock it regularly. There's natural reproduction there as well. So you kind of have a little bit of mix of wild fish and stocked fish. Now they do get fished to really hard. So even though it's a private fishery that is stocked, these are well-educated fish and they're gonna require stealth and a, and a really quality drift too a really good dead drift to get them to eat. They're, they're pretty picky about that type of thing because you know, they do see a lot of people. Um, this is gonna be just south of Steelville, Missouri. I think it's maybe an hour and a half outside St. Louis, something like that. So not too bad of a drive. Uh, really good option if you don't have a boat or um, you know, if you have limited mobility in that. Uh, a lot of Westover is very accessible. So, so it'd be a good one. Um, good one to take little kids or, you know, or anyone that has trouble getting around in some of the, some of the places that are tougher to wade. Uh, so Westover is great for that. Hatches there at Westover. Um, like many of our streams, it's not, you know, we don't just have crazy dry fly fishing by any stretch of the imagination, but there is some. Um, mostly it's going to be nymphing though. So the hatches, uh, tremendous, I know that's not a bug that flies, but we have a tremendous scud population. So a lot of crustacean type nymphs work really good, but sometimes you'll even see the scud migration and it'll be big schools of scud swimming through the water. So that's neat. Um, and then there is a somewhat reliable caddis hatch. So, you know, that's kind of cool. And you don't see it every time, but it happens somewhat often. Flies that I would recommend having with you uh, at Westover would, so my favorites are probably my absolute favorite for Westover would be the Never Sink caddis. It's like a elk hair caddis, but with a foam underwing. If you drop a real small, lightly weighted nymph off below it, that can be kind of like my favorite, like, search pattern type rig. So I'll have a, a never sink caddis with a with a scud or maybe a zebra midge or something below it. And that seems to work out pretty good. Other dries that that I've had good success on like Cahills and parachute atoms in a pretty small size uh, normally can be 
you know, somewhat effective, especially in the mornings and evenings. And then stimulators. A lot of times uh, you'll do all right on, on small stimulators in the evenings. Um, so nymphs, I'm normally going to be using caddis and scuds and just varying the sizes and colors uh, and weights, especially um, throughout the day to see if I can figure out what is working on a given day or what works in a given condition. Because sometimes if we've had a lot of rain, the spring will be pumping through quite a bit of water. So sometimes the spring there can can raise the, wa the water level a little bit. And then again, you know, these are... Uh, these are stocked fish. So uh, the old San Juan worm and egg is going to be something that works quite well too. For streamers, um, I, it, at Westover, definitely if you're throwing streamers, I would do it on a floating line. It's a very small spring creek. So definitely not going to need a sink tip here. But little small beadhead woolly buggers or a mohair leeches, pine squirrel leeches, small, like an inch long or maybe even smaller somewhere in that, you know, just small bugger patterns are a good place to start there for streamers. And uh, at Westover, we're going to be looking at uh, stocked rainbow trout, maybe a few wild rainbow trout here and there. And then starting just over a year ago, Gateway Trout Unlimited started planting vibrant boxes, uh, the Whitlock vibrant box with brown trout eggs. So um, we've had, and they hatch decent, um, we're not exactly sure, you know, we don't have a solid um, survey on how the, the hatched fish have done since then, because our only surveys have been fishermen and a little bit of seining. So it's tough to get a great survey that way. So we haven't, haven't been seeing a ton of brown trout, but that's kind of to be expected in the first year of a stocking. But on down the road, if you're down here, there's definitely the possibility of getting into some browns at Westover. So that's kind of an exciting thing looking into the future. And at Westover, you also, uh, you can go and just do it yourself or um, they have uh, 101 classes. They have fly fishing 101 classes that you can take there. Uh, great for beginners. Um, I just recently started teaching that class for them. Um, so once a month from like April to November, we'll be doing um, a full day uh, class there at Westover on that. And then they do a little bit of guiding too. So they, they have a group of, I'll do it sometimes. And there's a group of us that'll, they'll have doing guide trips out there at Westover too. So you can have them hook you up with a guide for an hour. They can kind of show you the ropes there at Westover, kind of set up some of the subtle nuances that, that the place requires. And then, uh, and then you can kind of go out on your own and spend the rest of the day fishing on your own. And they have, uh, fly rods there you can rent and then they also have a small fly shop too so you can pick up some tippet or, or flies things like that as well all righty that's uh, about it for westover so we can go ahead and move on to merrimack all righty so the merrimack river is um starts out as a warm water fishery and then at Merrimack Spring State Park, um, a uh, spring branch comes in um, and turns it into a trout stream for about eight miles. Um, there's several wade access points and there's um, two accesses where you can put boats in. So you can actually float this with a canoe or in high water, you can you could do it with a drift boat, um, but a raft, canoe, kayak, something like that's going to be a better option to float it. Um, or you know, as long as the the wade access points, uh, or as long as you don't uh, mind wading, there is several access points for you there. Um, most of them are pretty darn strenuous as far as getting to the river. They require a you know half mile or three quarter mile walk up and down a pretty steep hill to get there so it's a little bit steep um, if you access it at Merrimack Spring State Park so there's a private trout park on the river um, and that trout park is located on the spring that turns Merrimack into a trout fishery so you can access at the spring and then walk outside of the trout park and go and fish the river if you'd like or you can fish the spring too 
Um, normally I'll, if I'm using that access, I go to the river just so I can get away from the crowds, but, um, there is a ton of fish in the spring branch. So it, it's a nice park. Um, it's located bet between Steelville and St. James, maybe hour and 15 minutes out of St. Louis, something like that. So again, a, a pretty good one for a day trip. Um, Probably most of my guide trips, if we're doing trout just one day or a half day, normally we'll be going to the Red Ribbon on Merrimack. That's the most common one. Um, scud population there is excellent. So during certain times of the year, we'll see them, you know, just dead floating down the edge of the river, just tons of them. Um, you can almost always, if you, if you sane for bugs, get a good number of scuds. Um, we'll see some small mayflies as well, uh, some stoneflies, and a little bit of caddis. Um, and then a lot of terrestrial stuff in the summertime, beetles, hoppers, things of that nature. The flies I like to carry for Merrimack. So in the summer months, uh, especially if we're looking at low flows, um, I'll sometimes do a dry dropper rig. So like a Chernobyl ant or some kind of hopper uh something like that uh, joe's hopper is a deer hair one i believe that um that can do pretty good i do like to watch it though in the summertime i i like to check the temperature of the water and this one can get fairly warm in the summertime so i would probably encourage limiting the fishing to morning and evening if you can or possibly fishing the river morning and evening and then spending the mid part of the day at the trout park fishing for the stocked fish. Um, just because the river is, is kind of just barely cold enough to keep trout through the summer. So it's pretty easy to stress those fish out during the warmer months. A lot In the summertime, a lot of my guide trips were we switch over to smallmouth just, just for the, you know, I really like smallmouth, but also just for the sake of um, taking care of our fish because again they get they get a lot of pressure so um, they can be pretty vulnerable to stress that time of year um, nymphs um, nymph fishing is going to be most of what we do on merrimack so uh, don't do much in the way of the dry flies on merrimack not there's not normally any great um, reliable hatches that that we can you know really expect to get into on a daily basis so so nymphing is going to be the the main thing and a lot of the deeper holes and uh, log jams, things like that are going to tend to hold fish. So, so the nymphs that I like to have are pretty general um, stuff. A lot of you guys probably have in your box. So past rubber legs is probably my top fly as far as the Merrimack goes, I would say. Um, pheasant tails and similar flies. So some of the, uh, the French nymphs, things like that are going to be really good. Um, scuds, um, scud's probably my second favorite scud in the past rubber legs or they're up there really high. And then again, these fish, even the holdovers are, um, you know, they, they come from stockings originally. And a lot of times, uh, especially in the winter months, you're fishing the pretty freshly stocked brown trout. So the San Juan worms, eggs, marabou jigs are all very reliable flies that I'd recommend having. Normally I'll, either have people fish a marabou jig or take like a sand wand or an egg and drop a scud or a pats below it. Probably my, probably generally my go-to um, for the Merrimack in most conditions. Um, as far as streamers go, um, I would recommend a sink tip, especially if you're wade fishing, just to get the fly down deep enough uh, to be effective. Most of the time here, I would just recommend throwing on a olive woolly bugger and stripping it through the deep holes and runs. And that's gonna be pretty effective as far as a streamer goes. Um, I wouldn't get too fancy, generally speaking. If the water comes up pretty high, some of the larger like Kelly Gallup style streamers can be a lot of fun. Um, even though they're smaller fish, they can be real aggressive when the water's high. So, you know, if you like to throw the big streamers, that can be fun, especially in high water. And then, uh, the Merrimack's got a ton of smallmouth in it too. So, you know, you can throw the big streamers for trout and, you know, get a smallmouth here and there to kind of break up the, the time between bites. And that can be a fun thing, especially when the water's up.
our quarry here at the at the at the Merrimack is going to be rainbows, browns, and smallmouth. Um, the smallmouth kind of a year long thing. There's certain spots that hold them, certain spots that don't. Um, they tend to kind of be in some. There's just a few holes that'll that'll hold them, and it's kind of normally where they are. And then with the rainbows and browns, rainbows are they're pretty well distributed the entire eight mile stretch of that um of that float if you were to do the float and the brown trout are unfortunately they're in kind of rough shape on the merrimack so years ago the merrimack had a wonderful reputation for brown trout fishing but it we're not we're not really sure why it's part of the reason why browns are being stocked at westover it's a project that um mdc and gateway to use working on but um the brown trout just don't seem to last anymore in merrimack uh they get stacked midwinter generally speaking and those fish can be a, a ton of fun the first couple months that they're in the water when it's cold out and then at some point they kind of just vanish and um i haven't heard any great answers as to why it's worse now than it has ever been um most of, most of what i hear sounds like predation um from other fish or other predators generally is uh is what i'm hearing is is the issue but uh but it's kind of hard to say because years ago the brown trout fishing was great at merrimack um but in the winter time uh when those browns are fresh stacked uh they can be a whole lot of fun all righty, we can go ahead and move on to the current river. All righty, so the current river, um, where I like to go on the current river is a blue ribbon fishery. So that's mostly what I'm going to talk about because I, I haven't really spent a ton of time on the other trout stretch on the current. So there's a uh, Montauk is a trout park. And that is like the headwaters, the, the Montauk Trout Park is where the spring comes out of the ground that forms the current river. So it comes out of this trout park, again, like Merrimack, um, it's a nice park with a good population of fish. And I would definitely, if you like the trout parks, definitely recommend checking that one out. It's probably my favorite of the trout parks in Missouri. Um, but after the trout park, it becomes a blue ribbon uh, fishery. Um, and then there's about a day float worth of blue ribbon with three or four access points, weighed access points on, uh, on current river. And um, then below that, there's several miles of white ribbon uh, fishing as well. Uh, I'll see a lot of midges and small mayflies hatching on the current pretty regularly. Um, I would definitely recommend keeping a selection of pretty small um, dry flies, like size 20 and smaller. Um, just in case you see one of these midge hatches, because a lot of times you'll see a pot of fish rising fairly regularly to midges, and it'd be good to have them. And then sometimes very small mayflies as well, um, blue winged olives, stuff like that. This is going to be near Salem. Um, see, I mentioned a couple of these already, but uh, but our hatches. So the midges, they're pretty reliable year round. So definitely one to keep around. Um, just I think more of an attractor pattern than anything but the uh, caddis flies are good um, in the fall you'll see the October caddis so sometimes you'll um, see these great big bugs flying around after dark they look like moths and uh, they're just really large like size four or six caddis and uh, that's pretty pretty neat that happens in the evening um, we'll have a variety of mayflies pretty good stone fly population too um, I would say that the, uh, the current of the rivers that I'll be talking about here, the current river probably has the most impressive bug life. So I would say a pretty massive food source for the trout there in current river is going to be bugs. Um, the flies that I like to carry there, um, for dry flies, Griffith's gnat is a really good one for a real small midge imitation. Um, I'll carry some elk hair caddis, just kind of as a bushy, attractive attractor pattern. Um, and then light Cahills and parachute atoms. 
And those ones are good to carry real small too, like up to 18 or 20. Um, just because sometimes that can work in some of those midge hatches, but light Cahills and, you know, maybe two sizes and parachute atoms and two sizes would be good. And then, um, this one, the, the current river, it just has enough spring water coming in. It stays cooler in the summertime. So this is one that'd be a good one to hit in the summer if you were wanting to some quality trout fishing. Um, so the dry dropper stuff is going to be a great thing in the summertime. So normally I do terrestrials, Chernobyl ants, hoppers, beetles, things like that with a small nymph dropped below them. Um, as far as nymphs go, um, pretty similar to Merrimack as far as um, probably my favorites, but I think you can get by with a wider array of patterns here. Um, Pat's rubber legs works, um, but also pheasant tail, scud, zebra midges, all those are gonna work um, pretty well. Having some caddis imitations wouldn't be a bad idea either. Um, and just like on Merrimack, a lot of times, you know, again, because some of these are stocked fish, I'll use a San Juan or an egg up above a more natural pattern, just so I have an attractor and then something a little bit more realistic as well. And then marabou jigs too. <laughs> Sorry, what'd you say? Um, alrighty. And then for streamers, um, Again, pretty similar to, to the Merrimack. So woolly buggers, some of the larger Kelly Gallup style flies. And if you have a sink line, um, deceiver patterns are really good. So a lot of the unweighted bait fish, uh, they can be, you know, like a lot of places, you know, you get a little more water and then sometimes it makes more sense to switch to some of those big streamer patterns. Um, the quarry on, on Current River, um, you're going to see brown trout and rainbow trout. I would generally say slightly more brown trout probably than rainbows. It's going to depend on the day, but, but there's a very high brown trout population in the current river. And for whatever reason, they seem to be doing much, much better than the browns over in the Merrimack. Um, so they, they tend to be really pretty fish that are colored nicely. And there's some pretty good sized browns in the current river as well. So it's a, uh, definitely a quality fishery, I would say. And you're also going to see, you know, they're going to be more of an incidental bycatch, especially on the blue ribbon stretch, but um, occasionally you're going to get into some smallmouth and even the chain pickerel on current river as well. So the, the smallmouth on the chain pickerel, you'll, you know, normally they'd be something you'd catch on a streamer, maybe a really large, like Pat's rubber legs, you might get a small mouth on something like that. But normally they're just going to be eating streamer type patterns for the most part. Augie, um, but this we had, we had a question. Yeah. We had oh, a question. Yeah. Uh, someone wanted to know about these rivers. Uh, are they um, kayakable with someone who is a novice at kayaking? You know, or there's is there much current? In other words, here or white water of problems? Definitely, I would not describe it as white water. It's it's pretty mild. Um, I I would say that Current River especially has some places that I would pay attention and. You know, probably if you're coming into a tight spot or some log jams, I would positively pull the boat over and walk it through. Um, but as long as you pay attention to what's coming and uh, just, you know, keep your wits about you, uh, very much a novice would be just fine on any of these rivers, uh, in my opinion. Now, the only rivers on here that, that are really worth floating are going to be the current river and the Merrimack. The others are too small. Either you're not allowed to float them, or if you did, it would be somewhat inconsiderate to the other anglers because you'd be dragging a lot around other people. But, but yeah, Merrimack uh -huh. and Current both, um, they're, they're great for beginners. Just Current River especially, I would just keep an eye out for, for some of the tight bends. And when you're coming into a tight bend or a log jam, um, I would just you know paddle to the inside and hop out and walk the boat through, as long as you don't mind walking the boat here and there. Um, you're not going to run into any issues, you know, wear a PFD, take your, 
take your normal precautions. But but yeah, they're, the rivers here in Missouri, especially the ones I'm talking about right now, are great, um, great rivers for novices. Um, Merrimack's a super easy paddle and current river is not bad. It, it can be a little more fun. You know, it's faster water and a little bit more technical, but just kind of be careful with the log jams and tight bends would be the main thing. Okay. This, this is Scott. Let me jump in. So if, um, okay. I'm, I'm going to call if you guys can float the Kickapoo, you can float the current of the Merrimack. My daughter and I can do it all the time. <laughs> and, and Augie, just be, on uh, that note, between uh, Baptist Camp and the Low Water Bridge, I've heard that that was uh, log jams in there. They cleared those out, or like trees across? Um, did you know? Or did you ever did that? Was that just a story? Off and on. Um, it, it could have been a story. There, there's always going to be log jams on that float, off and on. Yeah. Um, last time I floated it, it was fine, um, but. I would, you know, trees almost every time there's a high water event, there's going to be a good chance that trees are going to fall across that river. Um, I wouldn't necessarily let it keep me from, from fishing though. I think it, you know, it might mean that it's good to fish with a partner where you can help each other um, drag a boat over a log or something. Uh, most of the time they're not horrible log jams, but, but you never know. I know it, it would be a little bit daunting to drive quite a ways to the area hoping that the river is floatable but most of these um are gonna be fine maybe carry like a folding saw in your bag you know on the boat yeah. just in case you need to clear something to make it possible to drag a boat through what would be and, my main recommendation and for everybody on the call so um also there's a lot of canoe rental places down there that are happy to they'll yeah. drop you off and pick you up and um you can canoe any of these rivers easily so um mm -hmm. yeah yeah acres wouldn't put us in at baptist camp but jadwin said they would so i don't know if i thought it was a story so right yeah so jadwin will and then there's yeah, jadwin said we, we could we could go in but acres wouldn't take us up there so i see yeah jet and jadwin can sometimes be kind of pricey um there is a uh, campground called Pinecrest and they're not right on the water, but the people that own Pinecrest um, are super nice and they're willing to shuttle you on that upper stretch too. They're okay. not open as much as um, Jadwin, but if you can get a hold of them, um, they, they're normally a, a little bit more affordable option for the shuttles on that float. Um, but yeah, that, those are, those are great there. And then let's see Merrimack, that red ribbon stretch. If you want to do a shuttle, there is a uh, campground called adventure outdoors and they have canoes you can rent, or they'll also shuttle you. They can shuttle your canoe or your kayak as well. All righty. Um, that's pretty much it for, for current river. I'd say, like I said, there's that white ribbon stretch, but Normally, I personally have not really gravitated towards the white ribbon stretches. Um, that that blue ribbon float is super scenic and has um, as it's a fun one to fish. A pretty technical fishing there. A lot of overhanging trees, so your cast needs to be good, um, or or you just got to have some patience to deal with with throwing some flies up in the trees occasionally. Merrimack's a little easier to deal with as far as having overhanging trees and dealing with some of what goes along with, with, with a small creek. But, but yeah, that's pretty much it for current. We can go ahead and move on to the little piney. So that'll be on the next slide. You still there, Scott? I'm here. My computer's froze up a bit, so. Oh, I can hear you now. For a second, I couldn't hear anything. There you go. Perfect. All righty. So there's a little piney. Um, little piney is another one that has a blue ribbon stretch and a white ribbon stretch. And um, again, that white ribbon's managed a little bit more for um, harvesting fish and the blue ribbon is more managed as a wild trout fishery. Um, 
I would say that blue ribbon stretch has probably the highest population of wild fish within a couple hours of St. Louis. So there's a lot of fish there. Um, they're really smart though. They're wild. They're definitely wild fish. So they're very challenging. Um, but it's a pretty Creek, great size for wade fishing too. It's going to be really too small in my opinion to do much floating, especially on the blue ribbon stretch. Um, but if you want to go out and do a walk and wade trip, it's a really good one. Um, accesses are just a couple miles South of Rala on highway 63. So, um, pretty easy to, to get to, you can, you know, camp at Lane Spring Conservation Area or stay right there in the, in the town of Rolla at a, at a hotel or something. And uh, little piney's right there. And uh, it's a good one. Um, there's, let's see, so Hatch is going to be similar to current, pretty good bug life. Um, but, you know, midge, caddis, mayflies, stones are going to be um, probably most of the bugs that you see commonly on little piney. I also carry real similar flies generally on Little Piney as I do the current river. So with my dry flies, I'm looking at Griffiths gnats, elk hair caddis, um, light Cahill, Adams. And then uh, in the summertime, if I want to do some dry dropper stuff, uh, more of the foam patterns, so Chernobyl ants, hoppers, again, things like that. Um, and then some of the real kind of general purpose nymph stuff too. Um, Pat's rubber legs, pheasant tails, um, scuds, and then zebra midges. And, you know, if you're into the, you know, I don't do much of it myself, but if you're into uh, doing some like the Euro style nymphing, I know that's getting pretty popular these days and is very effective. So I'm sure most of those patterns would work super well. Um, if you're in, uh, you know, it would work here. That technique would also be very suited to the little piney as well. Um, being small, um, normally you don't have to make crazy long casts. So it's not like you have to rely on an indicator to suspend the flies. So um, that Euro style with a, you know, 11 foot rod or whatever would be, uh, would be really good here. Um, it's also super high gradient. So um, very well suited to, to the Euro style nymphing. Um, streamers here. I don't do a lot of streamer fishing on this one. If I do, it's like little bitty woolly buggers and other traditional streamers. Um, you know, the, these fish are pretty small fish for the most part. Um, there's some quality fish, but, um, mostly bug eaters in my opinion. Um, so I'm normally using smaller stuff. One thing that does work really well um, that I kind of, you know, it works out really good at Little Piney. So I'll normally do this here and, you know, maybe not so much on some of the other rivers um, is swinging teams of wet flies. Um, the high gradient nature of this creek really lends itself well to using traditional, you know, winged wets or soft tackles. And the fish really seem to respond to that. I don't I guess probably most of the time it's, you know, just appears to be some kind of food source <laughs> fleeing or something, or, you know, maybe an emerger, something like that, but it really seems to be effective there. So um, it, that's kind of a fun thing that um, it, it's a little bit unique to that Creek as far as, um, you know, the, the type of water, it just lends itself more to uh, swinging wets than, than the gradient and say Merrimack, especially, or maybe even current river where it's a little bit slower and deeper. Most of the little pineys, um, very shallow water. So, um, you will need to be stealthy, but, um, but you don't have to get down super deep. So those teams of wet flies, um, work out pretty well. Um, let's see quarry here, pretty much exclusively wild rainbow trout. Um, occasionally you'll get some stockers that make their way, um, out of the white ribbon stretch and come up, um, further into the blue ribbon water. Um, but this is going to be mostly, mostly fish that come from, um, come from natural reproduction. Um, th these aren't native fish, but they are naturalized and they're wild. If you fish in the fall, and, and I would say the same for any of the streams, but, um, this one and, uh, the other blue ribbon streams, especially really pay attention for reds in the fall. So make sure you're not walking on the, on the reds when they're spawning. 
Um, it's neat to see, but um, you definitely want to avoid those um, so you don't hurt their reproduction. Alrighty, we can go ahead and move on to uh, Blue Springs Creek. So the next slide. Can you hear me, Scott? Oh, there we go. Cool. Uh, back one to the Blue Springs Creek. There you go. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Um, this is a this is a fun creek, but a tough one. Uh, this is another creek that's um, th well, actually this one has no white ribbon, so this one is exclusively wild fish. So um, this one has not been stocked in quite a long time. Um, it's also the closest trout stream to St. Louis. Um, so not only these are these wild fish, they also get fished to somewhat often um, for a creek this small. Um, most people uh, are going to end up driving a little bit further, in my opinion, and go into probably Merrimack or Little Piney when they want um, a day of, you know, catching decent sized fish in good numbers. Blue Springs Creek can make you work pretty hard. This is, this is very small water on Blue Springs Creek. It almost appears too small to hold fish, it, um, but it, there's a great population of wild fish here. They're just small. Um, like I said, it's the closest to St. Louis, doesn't get stocked, so relatively low population, but, but there's a good amount of fish there. Um, you might get into some creek chubs and shiners here as well, so there will be some bycatch. Um, this is gonna be near Bourbon, um, not far off of Highway 44. Um, this is going to be very similar to the other spring creeks in the bug life. So midges, caddis, mayfly, stones. Um, pretty much going to be carrying, you know, the, the pretty well armed with the same flies at Blue Springs Creek as I would be at Little Piney or Current River. Um, kind of all my standard nymphs that I like and, you know, probably stuff you guys mostly already have, I would think. Um, you're probably, you know, if you do a little bit of trout fishing, probably set up with a, a few of these bugs, I would imagine. Um, and, and don't feel like you have to throw um, the patterns that I'm mentioning here. I, I mentioned uh, Pat's rubber legs. Well, I think most of our fish in Blue Springs Creek or a lot of these Felita Pats, they'll probably eat a, a gold ribbed hare's ear or, or a prince nymph too. So, um, Definitely don't have to stick with what I'm mentioning here, but yeah, pats, pheasant tail, scud, zebra midge. Um, Blue Springs Creek's definitely not one I would um, really recommend streamers in. If you did, I would be fishing tiny woolly buggers, almost more like wet fly fishing here. Um, so pretty small bugger patterns, unweighted bugger patterns on floating line for the most part um, is what I would recommend do doing um other traditional marabou streamers can be good um let's see that is pretty much it for blue springs creek um we can go ahead and go on to some of the other guides in the area so so like i said so these um the, the streams that i've been talking about here are uh uh, mostly within two hours of St. Louis, and they're mostly the rivers that that I spend a lot of time on. So if you end up further south or further west, or if you have an interest in some of the other rivers, um, I got a list here of some other guides. Um, there's the first one, Damon Spurgeon. He actually guides on Merrimack. So he and I are the only fly fishermen that you see guiding much on Merrimack, but he's on there too. So he'd be another option for Merrimack. Um, but uh, if you go a little bit further south, there's the North Fork of the White. Um, there's uh, Brian Beatty is a good guide there. He owns Sunburst Ranch. Um, it's a canoe rental, and there's also some cottages and places you can um, camp as well. So he's got a good location. Um, and there's Brian Wise, who if you watch any of the, his fly tying videos, fly fishing the Ozarks on YouTube, you've probably heard of him. Um, he kind of specializes in big streamers and um, targeting larger fish, um, but he guides down there. 
Uh, and then Justin Spencer is another local guy from down by North Fork of the White who'd be a good one to go out with. Um, if you want to try the 11 point, which is probably the most scenic next to the current river, I would say, um, would be the 11 point. Um, Brian Sloss is a really good guide down that way. Um, I believe the only person that hold the only fly fisherman that holds a permit to guide there. So um, he's super knowledgeable, has spent a lot of time down there on the 11 point. Um, then Jeff Trigg, um, his company is called Ozark Sweetwater. He guides the Niangua, which is over by Bennett Springs, and uh, he does trout fishing there. Um, uh, I think he'll normally be in a jet boat or a, a drift boat over there. Um, then there's a guy named Sam Potter um, from around Rolla. Uh, he guides on a lot of those smaller blue ribbon creeks like Little Piney and stuff like that. Um, he holds a permit that allows him to do that. And then he guides on the current river as well. Um, another, he, he's another super good, good guide from the area. There, there's a few others in Missouri um, as far as trout go. Um, but most of these people here that I've mentioned, I either know them personally or I've fished with them in the past. Um, and I know I can vouch for them uh, being pretty good, um, good guides and also good people too. And then let's see here, the last slide. Um, so resources. Um, so I just included a little list here of things worth checking out if you're going to come down to the area. Um, the what I have here will probably pretty well get you pretty set up with all, with all you'd really need to know um, moving forward as far as access points. If you want to wade the specific places like with um, good directions on how to drive there, find a place to safely park. Um, and then access the river are going to be um, in a number of these uh, these resources. So Missouri Trout Hunter is a really good website you can access for free. It has some excellent information on um, all these streams and also how to access them. Um, so that's a real easy free option. Um, if you want more general info, um, the Mo Fishing app by Missouri Department of Conser Conservation is pretty good. It tells you like where you can catch rainbows, where you can catch browns, um, specific rigs for, for different stretches of water. Um, and it's also a good one for getting your uh, um, fishing licenses. So if you want to buy a fishing license without having to carry the paper permit around, you can use their app and that works out, uh, you know, pretty conveniently. Um, there's a book, uh, probably could be had for relatively cheap through the fly, one of these fly shops that I've mentioned, um, or maybe Amazon too, um, guy named Chuck Tryon wrote it. It's called fly fishing for trout in Missouri. Um, it's a, an, another really good resource next to that Missouri trout hunter, um, website, as far as telling you locations and how to get there and stuff like that. Um, and then I, these Two fly shops here, Feathercraft and T. Hargroves, are super knowledgeable fly shops um, with really good people. Um, we're really fortunate in St. Louis to have two awesome fly shops. So um, I would really recommend if you're going to come to Missouri, swing through St. Louis and, uh, and check those guys out. Um, they got a ton of experience, um, super friendly, super helpful. So I'd, I'd recommend checking them out also. And that's that's pretty much it for uh, for my presentation side of things. Anyhow, is there any questions? Yeah, I got a question. Can you hear me? Uh, yep. Breaker breaker one nine. You can hear me. Yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> so where we a lot most well, I don't want to speak for everybody. A lot of us fish up yep. in Wisconsin where waters are public, and we can sometimes uh -huh. just pull up alongside a, a stream and. Um, fish is it like that in Missouri or do you have designated parking lots and styles to get in and out or what do farmers do that so there's there? no there, you're not going to come across any styles here um, and you can't just access most of the rivers at road crossings and things like that um, there's a few places you might be able to do that especially if you're smallmouth fishing um, but a lot of that has gone by the wayside Unfortunately, a lot of people over the years have kind of ruined relationships with, with landowners, and now landowners are pretty big on keeping people 
um, from crossing their property. So there's not like easements um, along the rivers that you can travel either. Um, so pretty designated access points. Um, if you check that Missouri Department of Conservation um, website, a lot of times it has pretty good lists um, of places you can get onto the river. Um, that Chuck Tryon book and that Missouri Trout Hunter will also give you good info on specific locations. But as far as just accessing water, like up there in the Driftless area, um, it's not going to be that easy, unfortunately, down here. But yeah. the access points that we do have are, uh, they're good access points, especially if you don't mind trekking a little ways upstream or downstream to get away from people. The, uh, the, the conservation department, too, if you stop in any of the offices, they've got a, a really good trout map and a smallmouth map that yes. uh, you can yeah. give away for free and shows you the stream, shows you the road, shows you a lot of stuff. So, um, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, we, we have a really good conservation department. So yeah, yeah I, I'd completely forgotten about that one, but yeah, that's, that's a definitely something you'd want to do. And it won't I, cost I gotta, you anything. No, they give them away for free. I, in fact, I can bring some if we ever have a meeting, I got more than my share of them probably. Oh, so, Hey, um, I, got, I got two questions. One, what do you think uh -huh. about fishing between on the current river between mm -hmm. the park and Baptist camp, like parking at Baptist and working upstream? What do you, do you ever do that stretch or? Uh -huh. Yes. Sometimes I'll even put in up above there at Tan Vat um, uh -huh. if there's enough water to put my boat in. But um, that's really good wade fishing water, but, but basically right. anywhere between Baptist and the park is, uh, is pretty easy wading. Um, that's yeah. probably the easiest accessed water on the current, I would say. And it's good water. Um, it's pretty technical and fun to fish too. And there's yeah. a, uh, probably the highest population of fish is up higher. The further you go, there's probably fewer fish, um, downstream. Um, right. but yeah, that's, great water there you're going to see more people than downstream too um so you know on a weekend day i would expect to see a couple other people on that area but but it's you know there's a reason people continue to go there too i would say and i've always heard and i think it's true i hope it's true that uh -huh. there's a little little creek called i think it's mill creek uh-huh yep and and it's got the only pure strain of California McLeod River trout in the world left in it because they stuck some in there in the 1800s and hasn't uh -huh. been touched since. Yeah. Is that? that That's accurate. It, it, as far as I know, I believe Crane Creek is another one oh, yeah. that has pretty much a pure McLeod strain rainbow as well. Um, TU is doing a project here right now called Project Red Band, where they're going to, because I think most of our Blue Ribbon waters at some point had McLeods put in them um, way back. So they're doing, uh, they're, they're sampling fish from all the Blue Ribbon areas and taking like a little, um, just a little notch out of their fin um, for a genetic sample and doing some testing um, to see what percentage of McLeods and what stretches um, have the, the purest strain McLeods um, I assume maybe to help with some restoration um, back there on the McLeod River, maybe. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Augie, um, I, I've been to your uh -huh. website and I liked it very much. And I would suggest uh -huh. that uh, some of the other folks um, take a look at it if they want to see some of the sizes of these rivers. Uh, because I was surprised that uh, what, what I was looking at was some very beautiful rivers. And I know your mm -hmm. website's also going to show them uh, that you do fish for other species down there and find that mm -hmm. pretty much interesting too. So please take yeah. a look at these website. You'll, you'll get a picture of uh, at least some of the sizes of some of the current and the, and the other one mm -hmm. I can't think of it now. Uh, the uh, Merrimack. Yeah, uh, they're not they're not tiny. They're not the Wisconsin creeks we're used to. So the, no, they'll big. they'll be a little bigger. 
But yeah, but and, they, they uh, get pretty you know, low in the fish dryer. A lot of smallmouth. Do what? Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. We have some other questions, please. What's down in the eleven point? Just rainbows or browns too? Uh, just rainbows. Um, I've heard of a brown or two showing up, but but they don't they don't stock them there. Uh, right. I think the Forest Service doesn't want new species brought in. Um, I, I think the the rainbows were grandfathered in because they were brought in way back, so they continue to stock rainbows, but um, they're not interested in adding browns to that. I don't believe. Okay. But it's a great rainbow fishery though. Um, it's pretty deep, fast water. So a lot of indicator nymphing from the boat, um, on the 11 point, but really scenic, um, lots of fish. Um, it, it can be a whole lot of fun, that river. So are the rainbows, the, uh, the native fish? Actually, none of them are native. Um, the rainbows are the ones that in some of the streams, they do reproduce on their own, um, in some of these, especially the blue ribbon rivers. Some of them are strictly uh, wild reproduction and some of them are a mix. Some of them are just holdovers that um, that stay there for a long time and get big. Um, but uh, but yeah, actually none of them are native here, but the rainbows are the ones that you'll see, um, you know, naturalized and kind of wild uh, more often than the browns around here. Do you have any native brook trout in Missouri? No, we don't actually. I, I think we're too far south for them. Our, I believe even our coldest spring water is still pretty borderline um, on being a temperature that the brookies do very well in, I think. I see. Uh -huh, yeah, so unfortunately we don't have any of them. Um, some of the tailwaters in northern Arkansas, I believe, have some brookies stocked in them. All right. Any other question? Uh, just see from fast experience, Missouri does a great job. The Department of Conservation does a wonderful job there. Those char farms are wonderful. Um, yeah, outside the Driftless area, it's probably one of our best areas in the uh, Midwest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing, a lot of it's, you know, they're all spring fed, but a lot of it's, you know, gravel bottom. So it's clear, cold water. I mean, you can see down you know, 20, 30 feet in some of the really deep pools and you'll see right. somebody in the bottom yeah. down there and like, hey, how do I get down there to him, you know? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah, definitely. That gravel is nice too, because, um, you know, normally you're not going to need any kind of studs on your wading boots. And some of those rivers are pretty deep and swift, but, but most of them are not too bad as long as the water's not high. Um, and that gravel bottom is pretty nice for wade fishing. You know, we, we don't have a ton of um, big boulders and shelf rock that you can slip and fall on, on most of these, especially the ones closer to St. Louis that I talked about. They're, they're pretty easy on you as far as wading goes, especially if you're careful about water levels. What is the fishing season? Um, so legally you can fish year round um, as far as catch and release goes. Um, personally, I, I prefer to do most of my trout fishing in the winter time to escape the crowds. Um, having said that I strictly do catch and release. So the catch and keep seasons, I think in the warmer months, but, um, I like it in the, you know, late fall, winter, spring, um, outside of that. And even overlapping with that, some, um, if it's a little bit warmer, I'm pretty partial to the smallmouth fishing. So, so I do a lot of that after it starts warming up, but that, that's partly because it's what I really like to do um, when it's warm enough for smallmouth. But it's also because, particularly with the Merrimack, um, I, I'm concerned for the fish in those warmer months, uh, to be honest with you. Anybody else? Well, Augie, we thank you very much. Wonderful presentation there. Yeah.